Good day. Yesterday I published a video about radioactive waste at Kuburg and the three different levels of waste that you, nuclear waste that you get. And I wanted to make it clear that there's never been a nuclear waste leak at Kuburg as has been explained in the media and especially the Marula media article written by Jan Jan Joubert, uh, that was extremely irresponsible not researched and based on comments from the Minister of Energy who is not an expert on anything nuclear and if Jan Jan Joubert had any good conscience he would have contacted Kuburg themselves to actually get a statement so that he could make a, an informed representation of what actually had happened. Now in yesterday's video I said that I will actually explain the processes at Kuburg so that you the viewer could actually understand why this article was so badly written and so irresponsible. Now some of the people that have seen this article have gone on to make YouTube videos, people have made Facebook posts that have been spread across the country on WhatsApp, uh, Twitter, Instagram, all sorts of social media. So one article that was badly written has actually caused a huge problem in the media and in the public mind. And I've actually asked some of the people, if you believe that there is a nuclear waste leak at Kuburg, why haven't you evacuated yourself from your house if you're living near, uh, near Kuburg, like um, the, the leader of the Freedom Front does, when he actually brought this up in Parliament? If he was really concerned, I would think that uh, you would probably consider evacuating. So, the basis for the argument in Parliament sounds to me like it has ulterior motives. And I am sure that the Freedom Front Plus leader actually had this information for a period of time and decided to bring that information out now at this time which also begs the question what is the motive for this now I don't want to get into politics I want to get into specifics so when it comes to Kuburg running any nuclear power station has normal processes and those processes require gas releases water releases it requires for nuclear waste to be stored as I've explained before in my previous video and if you're a subscriber you can just go and have a look at the video about nuclear waste and the three different types of nuclear waste and how, how we categorize the difference between nuclear waste and normal releases at a nuclear power station so any nuclear power station needs ventilation the turbine oil gets ventilated the containment building gets ventilated the nuclear auxiliary building gets ventilated and that is the area where nuclear radiation could be present at any time. The entire nuclear auxiliary building is a controlled zone. In other words, people that leave that building or any material that leave the building gets monitored for radiation. So you cannot leave that area if you have any contamination on you. Any contamination. And you would be decontaminated or the equipment would be decontaminated or taken to a decontamination area before you could actually go out in onto the site never mind the public at the exit at Kuburg before all the staff leave they go through further radiation monitors to actually make sure that there's no radiation on them that's being missed anyway so the protocol at a nuclear power station anywhere in the world is extremely strict and it's probably I can categorically state it's the most regulated industry in the world so if you talk about safety in general, the safest place in South Africa is probably Kuburg Nuclear Power Station. So in the event of any disaster or anything happening, that's probably the place to be. But let me get back to the processes at Kuburg. These ventilation systems that ventilate the containment building, the nuclear auxiliary building, as well as the turbine hall, they run continuously 24 hours a day. When we have an outage period where we have to refuel the reactor, the configuration of these ventilation systems change between the nuclear auxiliary building and the containment building because we have to take equipment into containment and people have to actually have access to containment. When the unit is running and the reactor is critical, 
No one is allowed inside containment unless there is special agreement from the National Nuclear Regulator and obviously very, very special requirements for the staff to move around inside that containment building. Now, when the containment building is in the outage state, there is a lot of maintenance taking place. And during these maintenance times, there's actually access points to containment which is a zero meter airlock, a eight meter airlock, as well as an, an equipment access point, which is rather large, which has got a big dome on the outside, a, a metal dome, and a missile barrier that comes that goes into place after uh, the containment has been sealed up to make sure that nothing enters containment or leaves containment. And this is very important to understand. During a maintenance period, uh, with all this movement taking place, cables going into containment, there's actually flanges that get removed so that cables can get into containment to do specific testing. Now, for instance, if the fuel had to be put inside the containment building, in other words, loaded into the reactor, and one of these blanks might still be off, that is considered a breach of containment. It's not a nuclear waste leak, but within the nuclear protocol, that shouldn't happen. So it could be that you forget to put a flange on. People could still be moving around inside the containment building. In other words, the air is fine to breathe. But because the regulations are so strict at Kuburg, that would be seen as a breach of containment and an unmonitored release. In other words, there was a release path to the atmosphere from containment that is not being monitored. All release paths at Kuburg, normal release paths, which is not waste related, are monitored by what we call KRTs, radiation monitors. And these radiation monitors are set up to monitor gas releases as well as water releases. And these monitors ensure that if there should be any radiation that come out through a ventilation stack or through a water release, that that water release would shut down immediately and the ventilation system would shut down immediately, the main ventilation system. And then you would go over to a auxiliary ventilation system, which is called an iodine ventilation system, which goes on to close the recirculation and make sure that any radioactivity gets removed by charcoal filters, which would remove radioactive iodine or any other form of radiation particles. Now, it's important to understand that these processes are not nuclear waste. Nuclear waste is stored in the three different forms of containers, as I've mentioned before. Fuel casks, concrete drums, and steel line drums, depending on the level, whether it's high level, intermediate, or low level waste. The normal processes are not considered as waste being released from a power station.